So we finally have the Vexi XE wireless in hand and this feels really dang nice, but gotta admit it left me a little bit confused for a hot minute while I was doing the reviewing process, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The Vaxi XE Wireless is a medium-sized, symmetrical, right-handed mouse that lends itself very well to claw and palm grip users. Comparing it to the Viper V2 Pro, you can see that the sides have a more aggressive curve on the Viper V2 Pro, as well as this front flare. The front on the XE is not as drastic. So if you didn't like the curves on the Viper shape, this may be a better option for you. It is also a little bit higher profile with the hump being kind of the topmost part right about here. And the other thing I noticed about the hump is it's kind of hard to demonstrate here, but you definitely notice it in hand and the way it feels. The hump is actually a little bit flatter on the Vaxi as opposed to the hump on the Viper, which is more rounded, almost spherical in a way. The Vax AXE really fills out the hand and it gives it a very stable feeling to it. So it really feels like this mouse isn't going anywhere while you're using it. Along with that very stable overall grip feel because of the shape, it also has top tier coating. This is a matte, almost satin kind of coating and it is very very grippy i mean nice thing about this coating is that it really doesn't pick up a whole lot of fingerprints i find a lot of really grippy mice tend to pick up a lot of finger oils and stuff like that and this doesn't as much Vaxi is strangely vague about what kind of switches they use on their website so i did a little bit of digging and these are using huano black shell blue dot switches and these are easily the lightest switches that I have ever used on a mouse. Very, very light. They still have a nice light tactility to them, but there is quite a bit of pre and post travel here. You can see right here, like that's, it's pretty noticeable. However, the other thing I noticed while I was using it is it doesn't really bother me. It actually feels kind of comfy or soft for lack of better words, but either way, it didn't really bother me while I was using this in game. The side buttons are on the smaller side, but they do protrude quite a bit out here. So they are very easy to access and actuate. And the tensioning on these is very tight, really no pre or post travel. These are very satisfying side buttons here. We also have an extra button on top here that functions to check the battery life as well as page down. So depending on what program or game you're using, you can assign page down to whatever function that you would like as a shortcut. The scroll wheel here has this kind of neat little pattern on it, very grippy. The click is very firm. You won't be accidentally clicking this while you're scrolling in game and in like high tense situations. I will say that it is kind of lightly tensioned for my taste. I like a little bit more of a heavier tensioning to it but the steps are very well defined, so it doesn't bother me too, too much. Now, this is a completely driverless mouse, meaning that everything that you wanna modify in terms of performance is gonna be on the mouse itself on the bottom. Looking on the bottom here, we've got the DPI button, polling rate, as well as the debounce delay setting here. So everything that you wanna change about the mouse's performance is all gonna be on the mouse. They don't even actually have a software to modify any of this. Looking on the bottom, we've got some big, enormous skates here. These are PTFE, extremely smooth, more smooth than a lot of most stock skates that you get out of the box with many mice, but they are very, very thin. I mean, looking at this here, that's pretty dang thin. So you may be wearing these out pretty quick, but performance wise, great. I really like these skates. The cable that comes with it is a little bit weird. It's fairly flexible, not the most flexible, but you're not really gonna be using this while you're charging anyway. But the big thing is this little cable connector here. Kind of reminds me of the charging cable for the uh, G Pro, but it is USB-C. And the other thing that I gotta give Vaxi props for is this is a pretty shallow, I mean, it actually looks kind of deep there, <laughs> but it's got ample space around here so that most USB-C cables, you're not gonna have trouble fitting in here. In terms of the build quality, it is top notch. If you're an unreasonable person and you decide to squeeze this thing, I mean, mine does get a little bit of creaking, but it really doesn't flex at all. 
it feels really incredible in hand. This is a great build quality here. As much as ultra lightweight mice have become a little bit of a fad, at 74 grams, honestly, for what you're getting, this feels great. The real selling point for the Vaxi XE Wireless is gonna be Vaxi's back-end firmware programming of the mouse. It has a 3395 sensor, so you're gonna be expecting top tier performance from that. However, they also have on top of the motion sync a standard mode and a high speed mode. The description they give on their website and their promotional videos is a little vague, but the gist of it is that standard mode is just no motion sync, no other performance enhancing stuff. It just performs planned out of the box. But Vaxi describes the high speed mode as having the same dense tracking, but with the most responsiveness compared to motion sync at least. So a little bit vague, they don't give any specific numbers with how more responsive or what responsive even means. But looking at the performance curves here, standard mode definitely is not as clean a signal. Looking at high speed, you get a very consistent signal here. The curve is very clean looking, not as tight as motion sync, but it's still a very clean signal when you're using high speed mode. But then they released a competitive mode, which promises wired-like responsiveness. So that sounds pretty awesome. I took it in a mouse tester with the competitive mode, the most recent version, the V2, and it actually looks pretty similar to the high speed mode. On top of the similar curves, I also just, the, the way they describe it is a little bit too vague. So because the website and the promotional videos didn't really give any of that, I decided to just contact them directly. The upfront Vaxi is actually super easy to work with. They're super responsive. Heck, on one of their emails, they emailed me back on a weekend. It was like a Sunday. So kudos to them for being really responsive and attentive to customers. That's pretty nice. So I did have to go through a couple emails with them because the first email was pretty vague as to what the mouse modes do and I don't want to a give you guys the wrong information and b misrepresent Vaxi either. I want to make sure everyone's getting a full picture of what's going on. So specifically I asked them what is changing with the modes? Is it something with polling rate? Is it something with sensor performance? Is it something with like accuracy or latency? I wanted to know specifically, okay, what it exactly is changing. What the representative said is that high speed and competitive mode both increase responsiveness of the sensor. Both of those modes are specifically affecting sensor performance. But on top of the increased responsiveness, the competitive mode also increases the accuracy of the mouse movement in your computer to the actual trajectory of the movement of your hand. So competitive mode sounds like it's making the sensor more accurate, but in terms of responsiveness, I'm gonna assume they mean sensor latency. However, when I asked them for specific data points or hard numbers, they told me that they couldn't provide any because it is more of a body sensation. I think what they mean is more of a way the mouse feels when you're using it in game. However, either way, if you want to upgrade to the competitive mode for this mouse, you are gonna have to do a full firmware upgrade. And when you do that, you are gonna lose a few of the mouse's functions. So without any hard numbers, it's hard for me to recommend, should you just use competitive mode? Should you just use the regular firmware and run it at high speed mode? It all kind of depends on what you plan on doing with the mouse. If you're gonna be using it for more practical stuff along with gaming, it may be better just to use it in the regular firmware. But if you're just gonna be gaming hard with this thing and you've got like another productivity mouse or you just don't really have any productivity tasks that you use with your PC, then yeah, competitive mode may be the right to go. So let's move on to giving this mouse a gecko grade. Starting with gaming, the XE Wireless gets a solid eight out of 10. This mouse is really made with gamers in mind between the 3395 sensor, as well as just all of the firmware and the real dedication that Vaxi seems to have for making this a performance-based mouse. But the implementation and the kind of vague description of what's going on on that back end does have me a little bit hesitant. Regardless, my actual experience when testing this mouse was actually really good. High speed and motion sync both felt great. I didn't really notice any big differences between the two. When I did go to competitive mode, I will say it could be placebo, but it did feel better somehow, like more responsive because I don't have any way of make, putting any hard numbers to it. I can't really put a lot of stock on that or make recommendations based on it. Just from my subjective experience, competitive mode does feel it feels like there's something going on there. Lastly, the only other thing is we're using mechanical switches here. And for a mouse that's really focused on being a high level competitive grade mouse, optical switches just kind of would have made more sense. For everyday use, it gets a six out of 10. 
Coming out of the gate, it's missing a lot of things, but it also has a lot of extra goodies. There isn't a whole lot in terms of customizability since it doesn't have any software. So you're stuck with back and forward for the side buttons. And depending on what type of program you're using, they may not recognize it. I use Premiere Pro and it doesn't recognize back and forward as an assignable function. So when I'm doing productivity, these two buttons don't do anything for me. And then if you're using the competitive mode, this stops working as a page down button. One interesting thing about this mouse is that it can pair with multiple dongles and you can switch between the two dongles. However, then you'd have to be buying another dongle and those dongles are pretty low stock. They're not stocked very consistently. So getting your hands on it, even if you wanted to pay extra, may be difficult anyway. There's nowhere to stow the dongle on the mouse itself. And not only that, if you're doing a multiple device setup and you've got a bunch of dongles, that's one more thing for you to lose. So it's weird. The extra dongle thing is actually kind of an interesting feature, but you're also missing out on a lot of functions too. So yeah, it's not the best for productivity in my opinion, but it's not unusable either. As for cost, I'm going to give it a six out of 10. At $120, it isn't terrible, but the fact that it only comes from Vaxi and you're pretty much always going to be paying shipping on this definitely is going to hurt the price for this. It's pretty consistently out of stock with kind of infrequent restock periods. And here's a pro tip. If you plan on trying to get one of these, make a profile on their website like now. Just have a profile already set up because if you want to buy a mouse or anything on their website, you have to have a profile and be logged in. For my personal opinion on this, I give it an eight out of 10. The general look is really cool, super clean design. It doesn't have a ton of logos or any other junk kind of messing up the overall aesthetic here. It comes in a lot of different colors, so you can choose whatever color matches your desk setup best. And on top of that, I really appreciate that they have such a high focus on making a high quality product. However, I am still a little bit uneasy about the whole performance mode thing. I have a hard time believing that they don't know any data on what their performance modes do. Yeah, it's just kind of bizarre. So overall, the Vaxi XC Wireless gets a score of seven out of 10. This thing feels exceptional in hand and performs very well for gaming purposes. It's very comfy. The clicks feel nice. The coating feels good. The overall build quality just feels super premium. However, without the granular control that you get from software, it is a little bit limited on productivity uses. And frankly, something that kept me from grading it higher on a couple different points was how weird Vaxi is with describing the sensor performance between the different performance modes. But because I don't have any like really hard data, I can't recommend the Vaxi XC wireless based on the performance modes. However, based on everything else about the Vaxi XC wireless, definitely, definitely a pretty easy recommend. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out, watching the video. I just passed 800 subscribers. That just blows my mind. <laughs> I'm super thankful for all the support you guys have been giving me. It's just been blessing me a ton. But you guys take care, God bless, and I'll see you on the next one, okay? Later.